Hey, hey everyone, Felix from Nintendo Life here, and today we're here to review Red Dead Redemption on the Nintendo Switch. This review was written by the stupendous PJR Riley and converted into video by me. Cast your tired minds all the way back through the mists of time to the year 2010. It was a truly great 12 months of video games, with the likes of Super Mario Galaxy 2, the best Mass Effect aka Mass Effect 2, and the juggernaut that is Xenoblade Chronicles all arriving on the scene. And as highly anticipated and ultimately well received these games were, they still stood somewhat in the shadow of the year's biggest release, the all-conquering Red Dead Redemption. Rockstar Games' epic western was a real tour de France, a surprising, serious, studied and actual rather emotional rumination of the final days of the American frontier, which also had plenty of toilet humour and knockabout ragdoll violence of course. It remains one of the highest ranked games of all time on Metacritic and was heralded as Rockstar's best work to date by many critics at the time. Now that's really saying something. If you've never played it before, you've certainly seen or heard plenty about it, we're sure. It's one of the all-time greats, it spawned a sequel that's up there with the very best modern games has to offer, and well, look here, partner, it's arrived on Nintendo Switch. We already know some folks aren't happy about the high price tag, and we're in agreement on that front, but around these parts we're also concerned with how it plays and performs, whether it's all hat or no kettle, as the man says. Well, let's go straight to it, dang nabbit. This is a fine version of a fantastic game running at a solid 30 FPS, whilst, whether intentionally or not, looking slightly better than we remember the last time we booted it up on ye old tiny PS3 and Xbox 360 consoles. If you've seen any of the comparison videos currently floating around on the internet, you may have noticed the Switch port appears to be brighter and more vibrant in places. It certainly doesn't seem to have been touched up in any ways in terms of the textures or character models and everything moves and plays as it did, but the lighting here seems a tad more pleasant in places and less fussy overall thanks to the portable mode's smaller screen and its slightly higher resolution while docked. In portable mode, the game looks positively radiant in fact, with the small screen hiding jaggies and making pop-in less noticeable than when you've got it hooked up to your TV, where minor flaws and blemishes are laid bare. Blazing across the wild west on your trusty steed looks great here then, and during our time with the campaign and the excellent undead nightmare, we haven't had any issues or bugs. So this is John Marston's Odyssey, looking and feeling great, an enormous slice of Rockstar's very best work jammed into a portable form in perfect working order. Jobs are good. Slap a ten on that vermin, send it to the ranch and we'll move you down to the bar for a sarsa perilla. Something like that, and if only it was that straightforward. The thing is, no matter how amazing this game is, and it really is still quite something, there is an underlying lack of reverence here that makes it all stumble a bit especially for the price tag that makes it a bit hard to be as positive as we'd like to be about this exciting release. We're not expecting Rockstar to turn around and serve us a fully remastered spectacle, that's never gonna happen, especially on the aging Switch hardware, but when it feels so threadbare, when the graphics haven't had any noticeable touch-ups, and when you haven't added any gyro controls or other bits and bobs, it's really hard to be as enthused as we could and should be had we gotten a little extra something for our money over a decade later. Yes, you get Undead Nightmare, the highly entertaining single player zombie DLC, and you're getting all the rest of the add-ons and updates that came along with the Game of the Year edition, but on the flip side, multiplayer is out. That's a big omission, one that we could perhaps overlook and fully understand from a technical standpoint if you weren't charging us full price for a 13 year old game. What's here isn't anywhere near the shambles like Grand Theft Auto the Trilogy the Definitive Edition was. If you just want Red Dead Redemption on Switch, well, this is it, and it plays and looks fine. But doesn't a game this great deserve a little more than just fine? If the Switch can handle The Witcher 3, couldn't we have a little more TLC for this older and smaller open world effort? We're only slightly disappointed because we care. I mean, thinking back on the first time playing this one, that amazing opening sequence on the train, an opening that absolutely took 
took us by surprise the first time around with its grittiness, willingness to dwell straight into the real world issues of the time. Dutch's grand speeches, soldering into Mexico for the first time, accompanied by an incredible music interlude, there's some timeless stuff here, and that's all before a highly charged and genuinely emotional ending. Along the way, there's plenty of classic Rockstar side quests involving a delightful old bunch of unsavory characters, and that's a blast to play through for the dialogue and acting as much for the shooting. And returning to the game now, it all holds up pretty well. Yes, it might not match the prequel in terms of gravities or with the regards to its core gameplay, which is certainly a little janky in places by today's standards, but it's still a very good time with plenty of beautiful frame shots and camera works, ensuring the captivating narrative here doesn't look all of its 13 years. In terms of the action on hand though, it definitely does feel its age, especially with regards to how Marston maneuvers whilst on his horse. It really does resemble trying to turn a bus in a narrow lane at times. However, the most important stuff, the gunning down of outlaws, gang members, and other folk you just felt like blasting to the kingdom for no other good reason, is still fun despite the rough edges. The slow-mo targeting is as slick and stylish as ever, and those exaggerated ragdoll physics never got old as you choose which limb to pump full of lead. We've also been surprised with just how engrossing the story still is. If you've played the prequel and never managed to get around to this older game, you should make the time to dive in, as it stands up and enriches the experience of making through the events of 2018's masterpiece. Indeed, if you've never saddled up and journeyed through John Marston's epic tale before, regardless of the high price tag it's currently sat at, we still highly recommend picking this up. It's a no-brainer if Switch is your only option for doing so, and even those of us who've been through it before can find plenty to enjoy returning to the American frontier to experience it all over again. So to the score. We'd love to award a higher number as the game and the experience of playing it in handheld is certainly worthy of one. But as things stands, this Red Dead Redemption on Nintendo Switch rides into the eShop in perfect working condition, but with zero bells or whistles, and at that price tag, that leaves a bit of a bad taste in the mouths of many. This game deserves its remasters, revamps, remakes, and if it can't get those, it at least deserves a little more attention than the no fuss port we've got ourselves here. In the end, it's your choice whether to saddle up or skedaddle, cowboy. We here at Nintendo Life give Red Dead Redemption on Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you like this video, why don't you activate that eye and choose which part of the subscribe button to shoot. And don't forget to check out our website nintendolive.com for all sorts of reviews like these bit in written form. Stay safe, play some Red Dead Redemption on Switch or on other consoles as the price tag is a bit pricey and we'll see you in the next one. Felix from Nintendo Life, out. Oh,